<laughs> well, good morning, good morning, good morning. And how are you today? It is, to say the least, a magnificent day. I'm sitting up here high on top of Mount Shasta, just kind of looking out, and, and it's so sort of a busy day. Busy in the retrospect of people are happening. People um, are all over the mountain already. This is your April tape, as in April showers bring May flowers. And as I look out, I see the beauty of nature as she's been cleaning herself. These summer rains, or actually spring rains, have cleaned the air, and, and it's cleaned the smoke out of out of the atmosphere and. The ions are changing because the rain is falling, and as you know, any time that water falls or moves, it creates a negative field, which we call negative ions. This particular energy is, is something that we live on, this negative energy. <laughs> Not negative energy, negative ion energy. They should have gave it a positive word, but oh well. <laughs> These negative ions that we live on are created by the rain as they fall. Now, science is telling us that as these raindrops fall, they're not producing the same states of clarity they used to. They're now producing what we call acid rain. As we look at our monuments around the country and around the world, we begin to notice that they're starting to crumble. They're starting to disintegrate. As I look at our trees, around the world I notice that they too are starting to get burnt and change a little bit. As I look around the world I notice that certain plants are starting to disappear because changes in our atmosphere are creating changes here on the surface of the planet. I remember a time, even though I'm in present time right now, I remember a time in the past and I'm bringing that past time into the present so that it's happening in comparison to past present and future as I stay within this present moment from the past I I remember sitting on top of the mountains in my thirties actually my thirtieth year and staring out and seeing crystal clear beauty. I could see trees 200, 300 miles away. That isn't a figure of speech, that's actuality. The air was clean back then, it was, it was magnificent. You didn't even see smoke. Now I'm sitting here and I'm looking out and and I can easily see, <laughs> to say a thousand miles is not an exaggeration either, for I'm really high up on top of this mountain, and all I see is smoke. The day of getting up at some beautiful place and looking out and seeing nothing but the beauty of nature and all its clarity is starting to disappear. And that reality is starting to concern me. I'm looking out and I'm seeing what was once pure air. Not as pure as I used to see it. As I sit here and as I look out, I know that what I'm seeing now is the purest air and that in the future, to see it cleaner than this, I probably... <clears throat> and I say probably so it can change things. <laughs> I probably won't see it as clear for a while until man really starts to stretch and make some changes. I'm observing that on this planet Earth, she's changing right in front of our eyes, people. And the most amazing thing is, is that we've watched her change. We've seen technology come and, and be and go. 
I've watched the excitements of plastics being discovered till all of a sudden realizing that we're killing ourselves with refined plastics now that don't even disintegrate like diapers and they'll be here forever I guess part of the theme of this tape is conservation conserving understanding as I came up the hill I knew the conservation was going to be the title because I've been concerned about what's happening to us and when I say to us I'm referring to everything here because we are part of the whole and this planet is one tiny aspect of the whole as we are a tiny aspect of the whole as each and every cell in our body is a part of the whole you see there's the microcosm and the macrocosm but the part that I want to distinguish is the planet that we're living on. She's starting to look at us and wonder when we're going to start to swing to the other side of the pendulum. We have used her, and we have used her, and we have used her, and we have used her some more. We gain our life from her. We gain our bodies from her. We gain our existence from her. slowly in the past because this is the present but in the past I noticed that as we've enjoyed ourselves and the understanding of growth we've had a tendency to create things that we never expected sort of like sometimes we ask for things and we don't really see all of the things and all of the repercussions that are going to come from the reaction. I'm sure that when we created different energies we didn't know it was going to eat up the ozone. We felt we were serving man with new technology so that man could stride forward. I noticed that our intent was of service. I'm going to use conservation, that word, in several different retrospects. This is a very unique take because I can feel it inside. It is sort of an explaining of how our thoughts and our actions and our energies and our intuitiveness and our integrity works, using the word conservation. It is going to describe the past, the present, and future all simultaneously because I am in present time but I am going to describe things of the past and the future in present time giving you the retrospect of the perfection of things so that there is no judgment of right or wrong as I finish the using of all of these interperspective analyzations staying with the word conservation you will see how things work through perfection and not right or wrong so let us continue now with the understanding of the conservation of planet Earth, the conservation of ourself, the conservation of our knowingness, the conservation of our divinity. For we oscillate on many levels, and that's what makes all things perfect. The reason that we are now in the form of conservation to conserve the planet is, is that man has become aware of the fact He's killing her, simply, easily. We are aware of this fact now. It has been pointed out to us in several different ways. So, what is it that we are killing? We are killing ourselves. This is a simple tape. It's built on facts that I've accumulated. And so as I give you the material, it's not, well, this is a discussable material. This is discussable matter. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that <clears throat> some of the material I'm going to give you is, is all all the material I'm going to give you is accurate so one report says that the human race is going to be dead in 20 years 
unless we can stop the pollution coming from the automobile in the next three. That basically means carbon monoxides are filling the air and it's starting to pollute us. I see the end result of that. For those of you who don't know it, we've already started killing the vegetarian, uh, the vegetation um, kingdom. There will be different pine trees in the next two to three years, actually the next four and five years when it'll start to be noticed, of trees that will start to die. They won't be able to understand why or how it's happening. Right now, part of the mammal population, which are seals, are starting to wash up on the California beaches with skin diseases and huge lacerations and and changes and attacks of virus in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of numbers. The reason that we know this is we have certain clinics that take care of seals that come aground and we have records of how long we've been taking care of them and we have staffs on how long we have taken care of them. And for every one that we used to take care of in the past we are now taking care of a hundred as of this year. Science can't even figure out what's happening to the mammals now. They're all starting to have diseases all over their skin, like cancers. They are pretty close to us on the chain of, of human involvement. Man, slowly through his own lack of knowledge, destroyed the chimpanzees so that they're down in number and they are also the next in chain of command to the human species. So it looks like those things closest to us are starting to be eliminated. The next thing there is on the chain of command is the human species. And remember, we come totally from this planet. There was a little break and a little pause in there if the thought didn't run together. I had to kind of collect myself because I want to get the impact of what I'm saying here. First of all, we're built from this planet. Everything that our body is made of comes from her. So, if things that live in her are starting to become diseased, I have to start paying attention. And if I see the mammal chain, those things that we have said are closest to us in existence, if I see these things starting to come down with diseases and die, I have to start paying attention. I have to look at the human species and start to see that we have AIDS and other forms of cancers that are taking their toll on the human species. I see the exact same thing in the mammals out in the water because the waters are so polluted that we're killing our feather and our fellow brethren. I would like to point out, however, that that is not our intent. Our intent at first was to create things that would serve mankind. That was a beautiful intent. Our thought, however, started to become diluted. Our thought is something like, oh, what we want out of things, as we learn to ask for the things that we want. When we ask for things, <clears throat> as you notice in your life, not all things that we get look like what the thought was that we sent out. Sometimes we get back or not so fun things, repercussions, and like we go, wow, I never even saw that coming, and boy, did that kick my butt. Boy, I never even thought that there would be a repercussion like that. As our thought comes back, our thought comes back to the degree that it went out. Our integrity went out to the degree that it went, went out. And these are different things. Our integrity, because we wanted to save mankind and make life easier, is what actually went out. That is an intent. That is our highest desire for the highest thought. We've got a lot of energy on our intent. And the end result is that that energy comes back. That intent comes back. Our thought was that we were making things better. <clears throat> and so we started to increase different plastics and atomic energy and all of those different things and as we did that we started to intellectually know within this thought picture that well perhaps this could be not so positive for man later on but that's okay we don't know much about it so our thought is now we're going to create this but as you begin to notice the thought starts to become diluted the intent still to serve mankind 
starts to come deluded to the thought that, well, let's start making profit on this. It looks like it'll do a little harm, but we'll be able to live with this, see if we can live with this, and we can make more profit here. And slowly, our perfect picture, which is to help mankind, takes on different physical twists, just like we when we try to create a thought, have different twists in our head as to how we would like the picture to go so that naturally it benefits us. Our intent, however, was to serve mankind, to better ourselves and to better our fellow man and to better our planet. That is, in our, that is our intent. The reason that all things on the planet are perfect is because our intent is perfect. Our intent is to grow our intent is to serve. It never occurred to us that in the world of duality, our physical thoughts, as we put them out, would start to slowly confuse us to the degree that we felt it was okay to damage part of the planet because it didn't seem that big of a deal, and we didn't know if it really could hurt mankind, and so our greed managed to move along and create things. Now, here's where we're at. We're at the time in our history where the animals in the sea are dying. We're eliminating a lot of animals on the planet. We're starting to eliminate the human species itself through diseases we can no longer cure. Now, in the micro-macro world, as we start to look at the planet, we start to see that in order to recover, <clears throat> we've got to change the very globe that we live on because... We've got too many pollutants out there, and we've done too much damage. Not too much, but we've done plenty of damage. Now, in the world of trying to learn, we have created things such as pollutants and problems and wars. And Our intent was never to have all of this stuff. Our intent was to expand the awareness of mankind. And that is always continuing because that is man's highest thought. In the attempt to ch achieve this perfection, man has learned that he sort of destroyed this, he sort of destroyed that, he sort of screwed this up, and he's, he might have screwed that up. But because man has also learned to come into present time, man has discovered that he has done these things. Now the picture <clears throat> even though you look at it from the creative part of view and you look what man has created, he's sort of created a little problem for himself. The planet's polluted. It rains on you and you get burnt and it kills things. This isn't what the original intent was about. Now, they are telling us that we have to conserve. We have to conserve the things on the planet. We have to start conserving the plastics. We have to start conserving the glass. Each one of us as a human being has to get in there and start chipping in. We have to change our world and we have to change it fast because we are part of this world and if we are destroying everything around us, the obvious insight is that we are destroying ourselves. Which means we have to start conserving with inside of ourselves now. That means we have to see that we are have been on a self-destruct mode. Man has been on a self-destruct mode. Man has created beauty and then has sabotaged his very efforts and we must break the pattern of sabotage. We must break this pattern that seems to be one of the innate patterns that the planet Earth has as a learning tool to break self-destruction. Man has insights. Man has gathered insights as he has grown throughout this planet. As he has grown and he has learned, special people and special beings have said there are ways where all can be in flow. And that, my friend, is love. Love yourself. In turn, you will love others. In turn, you will love the planet. In turn, you will love your godness. The thing that must be woken up during the conservation effort is your awareness, your consciousness. I would like to point out that that is your divinity. As we begin to save the planet Earth, which man is doing because its highest thought is to serve mankind, and that thought is never lost, and therefore I must point out that man will pay the price in learning the lesson, but the lesson is perfect, 
because the intent in the beginning was to serve mankind, the intent during it, even though it has gone awry through greed and other thing, other things, the intent was still to serve mankind, although we consciously saw that we were slowly destroying different things. We just didn't think it was that important at the time. Now we're starting to notice how important it is. We're noticing that we are going to end the life cycle if we do not pull it all together. In the discovering that we have to pull the life cycle together like I'm conserving on every level, we will start to begin to notice that there is a divine side of us, a God side of us, the perfected side of us, the perfect side of us, that is going to start to help the physical side see what it is doing, see what it has created and how it is going to uncreate it, and in the uncreating it and in the creating of the perfection from its perspective again, which is living with clean air, pure rain, plenty of water, it is going to learn and grow. And in this learning and growing stage, man is going to make tremendous leaps. Not every single human being on the planet is going to be able to do that. Each is going to do it to the degree they are willing to conserve themselves, the things on this planet, and the willingness that they are going to do to expand their awareness in the form of conserving. Now let's take a look at the word conserve. In order to conserve we must have used up too much. So now that we're conserving that means that we've used plenty on the other side and in order to keep the balance we're going to have to slow down our particular use of things. Now we live in a world of duality. Duality that means there's a plus and a minus, a right and a wrong, a good and a bad. We also know that everything has a swing. If we can do this much damage to the planet, of course, we must be able to do this much good. That's just an aware insight. I mean, that's just common sense at the basic level. If we have damaged her this much by not being aware, then by being aware, we will be able to help her this much. For as much damage as she received, there must be that much perfection left in her if we are still in a world of duality. That means if we look into ourselves, break the grip of the physical plane, enhance the divinity to the degree that it can see the perfection in all things, Man will begin to conserve in such a way that this being that we live on, this planet Earth, will once again begin to glorify herself in the true essence of her glory. See, I am not a defeatist. I know that everything that is happening is perfection. Perfection to the maximum. Man would have to learn the lesson of almost self-destruction for the entire planet before the entire planet could realize in the human species that it was sabotaging itself continuously from experiencing its divine growth as it would begin to experience this divine growth because from this sabotage this is either we make it or we accept death as the ultimate glory and death is not the ultimate glory it is just another pause that refreshes <laughs> in the path of life here on earth no big deal nothing one way or another it's all perfect it's got its ups it's got its downs don't buy into it if you notice his divinity it really doesn't matter to you divinity is the perfect path materialism is the path of the physical plane we give to Caesar which is Caesar's we give to God which is God's we give to the planet, which is the planet's, and we give unconditional love. Unconditional love is what allows this glorious thing to keep growing in perfection, whether it's filled with poisonous gases or it's filled with pure air. Neither is right, neither is wrong. 
Listen here, folks. I painted a picture of a negative side for the physical plane to listen to. I threw in a little bit of pieces about the spirit, but I basically gave you unto Caesar which is Caesar's. Now I'm going to give you the spirit which is unto God. See, as I look out at the planet, I've watched man really pump the planet for the last 90 years, or maybe a little longer. I also know that <clears throat> for as much as, let's just literally say, we've ran her down in the last 90 years, we can build her up <clears throat> in the future because everything follows cycles. So I have just know in my heart that whatever we scrap, we're just going to replace. And this is a gigantic lesson for man to learn. And a lot of people are going to discover that during this lesson, as they recreate the planet Earth, into her magnificent beingness we're also going to begin to notice the perfection in all things and as we begin to notice the perfection in all things we are going to start to grow the spirit and the spirit is going to perceive that first it destroyed it then it built it back and all of a sudden why does it keep needing to do that on the physical plane and it's just going to start manifesting pure love and it's going to raise the spirit from the material plane into the divine plane. That's what we're doing right now. We're learning how to raise the physical level. See, as we begin to conserve the planet, our, our caringness within ourselves to recreate the mistakes that we made in the past, not that they were mistakes, they were just learning trips. As we begin to recreate this scenario through wanting to share and actually save the species, we're going to grow tremendously and be able to raise the consciousness of the divinity all in this process. Okay, I see the tapes running out, so I'll meet you on the other side. Here we go.